Hey man, what's up? It's Davis, your twin brother. Um, welcome to my morning coffee. I'm feeling a little haggard today. I had a show this last night and I just got over this sickness that would hiss struck me like on Sunday and I've just been feeling it. But um, I'm really excited about sharing with you what I'm gonna share with you today. So my Fresh Friday contribution for today, which is January 12th, it's a podcast that I've already told you about called Origins, all right? So it's a, the podcast was started by a guy named James Andrew Miller, Jim Miller, as most people know him. And you might remember the book that was on our shelves growing up uh, that Kent loved, which was Live from New York, and it's an oral history of Saturday Night Live. Super interesting. I remember picking up and reading just like a few chapters here and there back when I was really interested in like the Will Ferrell era, the Sherry O'Terry um, times, you know, like the Tim Meadow late 90s, early 2000s kind of kind of era. Um, well, the late 90s and the early 2000s, because I would say late 90s was more when we used to watch reruns and it was like, you know, Farley and, and Spade and all those guys. Love that. Love that stuff. I love hearing about how that stuff started and I love hearing about how uh, tenuous the beginnings of it were, you know, like, and Kent would even tell us stories from that. And um, I always thought that was great. I was like, man, what, where can this guy go next? So then I remember him putting out a book as well called, uh, what's it called? These Guys Have All the Fun. And it's about um, ESPN and how ESPN started. And what an amazing uh, story that sounds like it would be. I didn't read the book, obviously. Um, but I always thought that would be really interesting because they do, they did always seem to have fun. Like when we were really into football growing up and really into, and you know, still as we're sort of revamping our love for sports, um, there's something about ESPN that's just so like, like imagine being a play-by-play -play announcer for a football game. Like how cool would that be? Like what does it take to get there? How do you even find a job like that and get a job like that? And why does so many people care? You know, that's what's so fascinating to me about it. Um, I guess he also just put out a book, I don't know if he just put it out, but um, he put out a book called Powerhouse, The Untold Story of the CAA, The Creative Artists Agency, and um, I guess it's like, you know, high power, lots of money, like, uh, you know, the people subverting each other and, and finding ways to, like, fight their way to the top, it's super Hollywood, um, you know, I, I live basically right near Hollywood, so maybe I'll check that out one day, but the thing that I want to pitch to you is his podcast that he just put out called Origins. Um, I listened to the first season when I was on my honeymoon, actually, um, in in France, which was a dream. But um, it was so amazing because uh, it, it, the first season of this show is about Kirby Enthusiasm, which is a show that I think that you maybe picked up at some point and enjoyed, uh, but then dropped it. But this show is freaking great. Uh, I think it's a little too early for too many curse words. But it's so, it's so brilliant. Uh, neither of us have ever seen Seinfeld, okay? So we already know that. Um, but Larry David uh, co-created Seinfeld with, with Jerry Seinfeld. And you have to imagine, like, there's, there's this, like, compelling character behind the scenes of Seinfeld who tried to do stand-up, and, he, you know, and he did do stand-up, but, but he was sort of like a, he's an awkward guy, like, he's, he's a weird person to... Um, to see on camera. He wasn't really network material, but Jerry was. So he helped Jerry create this, this show. And people joke that that show is the show about nothing. Um, but what they were able to do is they were able to set up these scenarios that, that sort of like compound on each other. And by the end of the 30 minutes, uh, you have a storyline that started here, one that started here, one that started here. And then by the end, they're all stuck together in this whole um, bit. So, you know, obviously that show did incredibly well. Um, Dave, Larry David made a lot of money doing it. And then uh, he was able to start his own show uh, that originally was just going to be like a stand-up special, turned into a show, and he started doing it on HBO, which gave him incredibly free reign. Um, that show ended up being, uh, what is it? I, I wish I had pulled this up sooner. Um, seven, like what, how many seasons is it? Um, I'll look that up and put it in a post. Um, but or maybe it's even 10, I can't remember what, what the season is, but uh, I'm, I'm getting it confused because it stopped in 2011 and it just picked up this past year. I think it's seven seasons. Um, it was nine seasons. But regardless, the coolest thing about it is that uh, they never put pressure on him. He was He's such a genius. Imagine getting good 
at making scenarios that work in the sitcom format, but also having HBO as your platform so you can go take it wherever you go. And Larry David is unafraid to take it to these in ridiculous places. And then the guy himself, his perspective on the world is so unique and, and bizarre and, um, you know, it's, it's so unrelatable and it's cringy and mom hates watching it because she doesn't understand how a guy could be like that. But I love it. You will love it. And hearing the stories is amazing. He, and he's the, Jim Miller's able to get to these people and interview them and get stuff out of them. That's just brilliance. He's able to, uh, he talks to Larry David, obviously, J.B. Smoove, who, and, and how he got onto the show. He's one of my favorite characters. Jeff Garland, who helped push Larry to do it. Richard Lewis, who's Larry's good old friend and is also a good friend on the show. But he talks to the people backstage. He talks to, um, or behind the scenes, the ones who film it, the people from HBO, and just sort of all these people talking about this creative genius weirdo that is Larry David. The second season just started, started putting out episodes for that. That one's about ESPN which is great. The first episode is about ESPN's relationship to social media and how that really changed things for them. Um, the one I just re listened to is about college game day and how that show started out as nothing. And like, I even hearing it, I'm like, how does this show, like, how do these shows even start? It's in such a different avenue than I'm used to imagining show business. But, uh, but these shows, you know, like there are people who fight for that, for those jobs and they get them and it talks about like the beginnings of Kirk Herbstreet and, and how Lee Corso, started his bit with the mascot, with the headgear, as he calls it. <coughs> it's so much fun. Um, and I guess, like, later in this in the show, they're going to do an episode about music, or a season about music, and they're going to do a season about a famous romantic relationship, which is sort of stepping outside of what he usually does, which is um, media empires. But I just wanted to read you this quote that he said. He was quoted in Vulture, having described what he does and why what he does is interesting to him. He said, Origin stories to me represent a lot of drama. In the beginning, stakes are very high. If you make a real blunder, it could be fatal. And also the upside is tremendous. If you all of a sudden do something that's great, wow, you bought yourself a lot of wind at your back. And that gets you much closer to fulfilling your dream. Um, when he's talking about the things that he does, he says, uh, or the people that he did, he said, um, wh or why he interviews them. He said, I mean, the five guys who left William Morris and bought a bunch of card tables and started creative actors or creative artists agency or the father and son that started ESPN. Everybody thought SNL might just last a few episodes. I love people who bet on themselves. I love dreamers. Um, if you're looking for a show that's just interesting, compelling and, and oddly inspiring, this is it, man. You're going to love it. All right, man. Love you. See you soon.